All right, welcome back, everybody. The Biden administration's foreign policy is a complete surrender to China compared to the America First stance pushed by President Donald J. Trump. My next guest led the effort against China's unfair trade policies and the theft uh, for and the theft rather of uh, intellectual property. He headed up by the Trump administration and a former trade advisor for the Trump administration, author of the books Death by China and Crouching Tiger, Peter Navarro. Mr. Navarro, thank you so much for being here. You certainly knew how to push back on China and their malign efforts. How tough is it for you to sit back and watch all the good work you did to stand up to communist China being unwound by a socialist Congress and a, uh, a socialist occupier of the Oval Office? A couple of things. Uh, Nixon famously once said, personnel is policy. And uh, there's over 20 uh, officials now in the Biden administration, either in already in the White House or waiting to be confirmed, that are clearly compromised by the Chinese Communist Party. Let's not forget that literally eight minutes in to Joe Biden's reign as president, the Chinese Communist Party sanctioned <laughs> me, Matt Pottinger is in the NSC, Robert O'Brien, Secretary of State Pompeo. They were sending a clear signal to the Biden administration is, we know you're going to be easy on us. Now, when you say that, that how tough is it me, for me to watch, one of the toughest things I'm having really a hard time swallowing is I did this absolutely beautiful executive order in the name of Blue Collar American National Security, working with the Department of Energy. And we did an executive order that effectively bans the sale of Chinese bulk power equipment into our electricity grid. Why is that important, Chris? Because the electricity grid is one of the most vulnerable pieces of our infrastructure. And in times of conflict with communist China, it's far less likely that they'll actually shoot shoot guns and drop bombs. Uh, they're more likely to do what's called unrestricted warfare, where attack things like the electricity grid. Biden, I, I don't I still don't understand how how he could be this stupid as to as to <laughs> rescind that order. Because that thing is beautiful. That protects the American people yeah. even as it creates American jobs. So yeah, how do I feel? I'm not happy right now. And I am not happy with that barbed wire wall up at the Capitol Hill that, that's that's basically keeping the people yeah. away from there and the White House. So uh, that those are my initial thoughts, sir. Well, for, yeah, Forbes just came out with an article a couple of weeks ago about how now China is bragging that they have a first strike capability and electromagnetic pulse, which could cripple our grid. And I think that's the yep. type of warfare that you were alluding to, trying to protect warfare. our grid. Yep. At the height of the pandemic that the Chinese so benevolently unleashed on the world, China threatened the United States of America with our medications. Now, President Trump was working on getting our supply chains out of China so they could never make that kind of threat again. Have you seen any evidence that Mr. Biden is working to do the same? Well, uh, again, this gets down to executive orders. Uh, I remember, again, a, a beautiful executive order I helped write on uh, essential medicines, which it's a pure Buy American Trump order. It requires the Department of Defense, Veterans Affairs, and Health and Human Services to buy all of their essential medicines, uh, their medical supplies and the equipment and the protective, uh, personal protective equipment, the PPE, from American manufacturers. It's an absolutely great order. So we put in motion some things. We, we had a, a half a billion, a billion dollar, a, a multi-billion dollar grant for a company called Flow out in Virginia that's now making our antibiotic antibiotics instead of having to bring them in from China. Uh, so that's fighting mm -hmm. against the CCP virus. But you know, if he starts unwinding orders like that at the same time that he, I mean, this whole thing, like Chris Whitten, he's one of the smartest guys I know. You had that interchange with Biden on the Uyghurs and the concentration camps. One of the other things we did, Chris, working with Mark Morgan, um, at Customs and Border Protection is we we slapped an order on which says, no, we're not going to buy 
uh, allow the import of any products from China that were made with that Uyghur slave labor. I guess Joe Biden's going to rescind that as well. Those are there's two million people in concentration camps, and they're not only forced to engage in slave labor. The healthiest ones, ironically, are used basically for organ donation. These people are literally put to sleep. Oh. Their organs are taken from them, and then they're put in the ground. I, and Joe Biden, this is like this is like different cultural norms, sir. What are you? You and your son no. are two of the most corrupt people I know when it comes to China. And this has got to, I mean, we're getting off to a really bad start, Mr. Biden. Sure, sure. And it's not just, it's not just Mr. Biden. His entire political party seems to be turning a blind eye to all of that. How worried are you that the American military and our secrets are ripe for the stealing under a Biden administration, just like they were under a Clinton administration? Well, I, I talked about uh, the seven deadly sins of communist China, and you have to understand just how comprehensive their attack on America's technological crown jewels are. It's not just the intellectual property theft. It's the forced technology transfer. It's the currency manipulation they use to basically put our businesses in the ground. It's their state-owned enterprises. Uh, it's the fentanyl they use to kill Americans in our communities. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really worried about all of this because I don't think the Bi the Biden regime is going to put up effective defenses. We need it. I mean, we needed a second term, basically to do a number of things, basically to to finish what we started with decoupling from communist China, to secure mm -hmm. that border, and to get out of our endless wars. Those were the three points of the of the Make America Great Compass that President Trump stands for and stood for. And Joe Biden, I mean, look, one of the first things he's done is, you know, it's like keeps his school, the schools closed and he opens our borders. It's crazy to, <laughs> to invite millions of illegal immigrants across our borders at a time when over 10 million Americans are unemployed, the dis, dis, disproportionate of which, Chris, are lower income, blue, blue collar, working class yep. Americans who are going to bear hey. the brunt of that. So Biden's not getting off to a good start on any front. He's compromised by the CCP and, and his major I officials. I got sanctioned by Beijing. That's not going to happen to my counterpart in the White House. No, no, I, I hear that. You know, by the way, there's a poll out there right now that says blue collar workers are abandoning the Democrat Party as they're falling in love with the Communist Party. They're abandoning the Democrat Party and they're signing up yeah. with Trumpism out there. So, uh, Mr. Navarro, always a pleasure talking with you. Come back soon. Still Hi, Emma Reckenberg here. If you like this video, there's a whole lot more to see on Newsmax TV. You can watch for free right here on our YouTube live stream and be the first one here each time our experts break down real news. Just hit that subscribe button, ring the bell icon, and stay with us on America's fastest growing cable news channel, Newsmax TV.